uh, Jeremiah chapter 32, and let me read the first five chapters. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me, Nebuchadrezzar. <coughs> For then the king of Babylon's army besieged Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the king of Judah's house. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, Wherefore dost thou prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, shall not escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans, but shall surely be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him mouth to mouth, and, I, and his eyes shall behold his eyes. And he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there shall he be until I visit him, saith the Lord. Though ye fight with the Chaldeans, ye shall not prosper. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father, almighty God, we bow before thee tonight, realizing how much we need thee. And Lord, we just ask that thou wouldst just be with us every day. We pray, Father, that you'll just help us to pray more. We pray that you'll help us to study the scriptures. We pray that you'll help us to surrender our life to Thee, that we can live holy for Thee, that you'll help us, Lord, just to, to give every part of our life to You every day and to glorify Thy precious name. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus. And Lord, help us uh, that we can be looking for Your coming. Now bless this service tonight. Lord, we need Thee so much. This country needs Thee. We pray for revival across America. We pray, Lord, that You'll help Your people uh, to do thy will. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> I want to preach on the subject revival. You know, we have before us a sad state of a backslider. Zedekiah was the king of Judah. He had come to the throne when his nephew was captured in the siege of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. The king of Babylon had taken Je Jehoiakim the king of Judah to Babylon and appointed his uncle Zedekiah to be king in his stead. Zedekiah would not listen to Jeremiah's preaching and entered into negotiations with Egypt against Babylon because Jeremiah had warned him not to do that but to trust in the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar laid siege to, Jeru siege to Jerusalem. Jeremiah had warned Zedekiah once more uh, not to enter into a, agreement with Egypt. Again, Zedekiah refused. Jeremiah had told Zedekiah and the people that it was futile to fight against the army of Babylon because God had already delivered them into the hand of the king of Babylon. It was over. God had warned by his prophets for many years that they needed to repent, and they had not repented and so the Lord had told them it was futile. There were two prophets that prophesied to Zedekiah. Jeremiah had prophesied that uh, Zedekiah would see the king of Babylon eye to eye and would be taken to Babylon. Ezekiel had prophesied about Zedekiah and said that he would be ca taken captive and he would never see Babylon. Now if you read those carefully, it seems like those are contradictory prophecies. You have to study the Bible. Zedekiah had Jeremiah shut up in prison because Jeremiah was warning them not to fight against the king of Babylon. And when the battle came and Jerusalem fell, both prophecies came to fulfillment because the prophecy that Jeremiah had given was that Zedekiah would see the king of Babylon eye to eye. As Zedekiah tried to escape, he was captured. And he, his eyes were put out. And the last thing that he saw was the, was the slaying of his sons. He was taken to Babylon just as, as Ezekiel had prophesied. He did go to Babylon, but he never saw Babylon because he was blind. The word of God is always true, folks. 
God's word is always true. It, it doesn't have to make sense to us. We don't have to reason it out. All we need to know is what the Bible says and act on the word of God. There's somewhat of a happy ending to this story. In Babylon, Zedekiah, I take it, did repent of his sins. The Lord caused him to come into favor with the new king, Evil Merodach, and he was, he was cared for there in Babylon for the rest of his days. But what a, what a sad story here. How things could have turned out so differently for Zedekiah if he had just listened to the preaching of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. If he would have just, if he would have just repented of his sins, he would have been spared his eyes. His eyes would have never put out, been put out. He would have not been blind. Probably would have been spared his sons being killed. He could have remained on the throne in Jerusalem. He could have remained there and worked uh, according to God's will and been a blessing to his nation. You see, backsliding is hard. Not going along with God, not obeying the Lord, and not, not doing what God wants us to always has terrible results. I want to preach tonight on revival. The word revival. And I'm going to let the, word, the letter R in revival stand for rejoice. In Psalm, the 85th chapter, verse 6, Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Now I think that uh, you, may call, you may think it's strange that I, that I chose for the, word, the letter R, rejoice, because I think most of the time when we think of backsliding, we think the first thing that we need to do is repent. I'll get to that. But you see, I'm looking at the scripture here, and it says, Wilt, wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? How important it is that we understand where backsliding comes from and what happens whenever a person does backsliding. I want us to think, and I want us to think about the meaning here of this sixth verse. Wilt thou not revive us again? That's what we need, isn't it? That's what we need today in America. That's what we need in our churches, is revival for the Lord to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us, for to get back to the word of God and to surrender our hearts to the Lord and live as he would want, to, want us to, that thy people may rejoice in thee. You see, we need to think why revival is needed. Revival is needed when people have fallen into disobedience to God and they have lost their joy. Have you ever seen a backslider? Someone who was close to the Lord? Someone who lived for the Lord and they drifted away from God and you really know that they're in a backslidden condition? There's no happiness in a backslider's life. They may have times of fun, they may have times of relief, but they really have, they really have no, no joy in, in their life. I've seen people who would come to church and, and did so well in the Lord and, and they followed the Lord and they had a joy in their life and a happiness in their life. But then they drifted away from God and they, they lost that joy and they lost that happiness. Have you ever seen someone who's sick? Have you ever had the flu? You know how the flu comes on? Usually you think you're catching a bad cold. And you have the idea that, okay, I will get over this in a couple of days, this will be gone and the flu will be gone. But it doesn't go away, it's not really a bad cold and it turns, or at least if it starts out as a cold, it turns into something worse. And you feel worse. Oh, you may try to go on, you may, try to, you may try to work your way through it, but let me tell you, if it's the old-fashioned hard flu that we used to have, there's no working your way through it. It just gets worse and worse, and you get to feeling worse and worse. Listen, that's the way sin works in a person's life. When a person backslides away from God, they try to go on, they try to be spiritual sometimes, but they've lost the joy of their salvation. 